This is a video demonstration on how to use Adobe Audition as um, an audio editing software. Um, Audition is probably one of the best pieces of software that you can use to edit audio stories. And this is how we're going to uh, work with it. So let's go ahead and start up Audition, uh, which is right here. Now Audition is um, kind of an expensive um, piece of software as are most of the um, pieces of software that come from Adobe. Um, but you can um, download the software and I think you get a free seven or 30 day trial period if you wanna do that. Um, if not, you can actually go to um, Adobe Audition. Let's just open that up real quick. And you can um, sign up for a student discounted uh, version of the software. So rather than having to um, get the more expensive version, we can get the student version. So you need to basically go to um, your Adobe website and here there is um, prices and plans for Creative Cloud apps. If you go to the students and teachers section, um, you can see you get um, access to all of the applications for roughly 148 Hong Kong dollars uh, per month. And that gives you access to all of the apps. And if you look at all the apps and you can see um, everything that they have, that includes Photoshop, Adobe Edition, Adobe Premiere, et cetera, et cetera. If not, you can go ahead and uh, just download it to start off with, um, and you can use it, I think, as a trial version for, for several days. Okay, so let's get into uh, the application. So here it is, it's already opened up for us, and um, let me just go over um, some of the various windows and panels uh, that we have available to us here. Um, so first of all, right in the middle, this is our main panel. This is where we're going to work on what's called the session or the uh, multi-track mixdown. Um, it's our timeline. Um, you'll see once we actually create a session, a multi-track session, we'll have um, various tracks in here and a few other things. Uh, up here in the upper left, that's where we're going to import um, our various audio files that we're going to use for our um, um, audio story, or in this case, our podcast. Down here we have a, another panel. This is basically our media browser. So this is where we can kind of hunt around and we can find um, our various audio tracks, um, either through folders and then through the various files this way. We can then upload them or import them into um, our file folder or our file panel. Um, we also have down here our history. If you want to look at all the steps that you're doing, it's not really that important, but you can kind of keep that open as well. Um, there are some other um, panels that have been opened, we won't necessarily need all of them. Um, we will need, of course, the levels here on the bottom. Um, and you'll just see there's a left channel and a right channel. That means you've got a left speaker and a right speaker, or a left microphone and microphone, left or right microphone. If you recorded it via stereo, you'll see the two levels bouncing up. And as I've probably mentioned several times before, you want to make sure that um, on the dominant track, the dominant sound, your levels are typically bouncing between the minus six to minus 12 range. So it'll come in as I th think as a green, and then once we get around here, it'll just flash to yellow. And once you get above the minus six range, or even above the minus four range, it'll start flashing in red. And that means you're um, in danger of clipping out the sound, or your sound will be uh, too loud and it'll be distorted. So just kind of keep, keep an eye on that, and then we can make some adjustments for our audio levels to make sure that our audio is always peaking between the minus six to minus 12. Here are several tools that we're gonna work with. Um, we'll talk briefly about the waveform and the multitrack. Waveform, you'll see what that is. We'll, we'll work with a file in the waveform editing editor part to um, correct some room tone or, or hissing or noise that we may have in the background. And the multitrack is basically where we will put together um, our entire story. So when you first start the software, often you might, might wanna click this green button on the top. This will basically give it full, um, full screen, which is always very, very important. Um, some things um, or some windows that you may want to have open. Uh, if you click right here, window, you want to make sure that your editor and files are open. History, yeah, you can have, have that. It's not really that important. Level meters, media browser, um, and tools. Um, there's not really two other, too many other windows that we need right now um, when it comes to working um, in the software. Okay, so. All right, one other thing you may want to do is just make sure that your workspace is, is in the default mode, which is what we're working with right now. 
And as I mentioned, uh, some of the windows that you may want to have open um, would include, uh, let's just slide down here real quick, those editors would be editor, files, history, level meters. Um, yeah, we can leave markers as well. We can probably use markers if we want to. So that's something over here and I'll show you how we're going to use markers here. Um, uh, markers, properties, and tools, All right? Properties and tools. And some of those, some of these panels will overlap or some of these selections will overlap in the various panels. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with a brand new project. And we can start off with a brand new project by either clicking on multi-track, right? We can just click right here. We're going to file new multi-track session. Okay, so here's where we're going to create our new um, session or our new project that we're going to work on. Um, I can name it something. Um, so I've actually, I've, I'll talk about this dummy or this fake podcast that I've created. It's called um, Can't Get Out of Bed. So can't get out of bed. And the person I'm interviewing today, her, her name is Amelie. And that is our podcast, okay? I'm gonna save it in location. So let's go ahead and browse for a place. Um, I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna go to audition edit. Um, and let me just save it in here because in here I've pretty much got all the files that I wanna work with <clears throat> for my project. Um, when it comes to audition, it's quite important to be very organized um, with your file structure. So try to keep your ent one entire project just within one folder. So everything we're going to do on this assignment or on this project will be all within this one contained folder called audition edit and that's where you should probably put all of the audio files that you've recorded and that are going to be used for this assignment okay so let's choose now we can hit say there we don't want to have a template but what's kind of good about this is um, Adobe Audition has already created a template for us called podcast and that's actually kind of beneficial so let's go ahead and select the podcast template we'll work with that we hit OK, and now suddenly in our, of course, in our main panel, you can see you've got the various tracks to work with here. And you can see our timeline as well. So on our top, we've got a timeline that's based in seconds. Um, we've got our scrubber, so we can go move forwards and backwards in time. Um, we're going to drop various files in our, in our timeline here as well. Um, and these are going to be determined on the different components or the different parts of the podcast. Now, what I've mentioned before is when you're working on a podcast, there are different types of sounds that you're going to work with. For example, um, you'll have probably narration that will come from maybe a host or narrators um, or even reporters or interviewers. So we can use this top track. It's already got a name for us, host. Now, if we want to, we can click on that. We can change the name. So you could even say host, narrator, um, reporter. All right, you can change the track names if you want. Um, interview, um, as we've got right here, that is of course the people or person or people that we want to interview. So maybe we want to lay down um, our interview in here. Sound effects, yeah, so you know we can leave it as sound effects or we can just, if you have a chance, maybe you can um, record some ambient um, or natural sound um, or we'll just say sound effects. Um, we're definitely going to use music. Um, we also are going to have an intro and an outro file, which I've uh, created f uh, for this assignment or for this um, uh, this dummy or sample podcast. And I think you should probably, for your assignment, create some kind of um, intro and outro file as well. And I'll show you what that what that is in a little while when I start importing my files. And I'm actually going to put my intro and outro files in the top up here in the host narrator reporter section, and then my interview here ambient natural sound here and music down here. Okay, so we need to now get some files into um, our files folder or files panel up here. So there's several different ways we can actually import or bring in some files to work with. Um, I can, of course, as I said, go through my media browser so I can go to um, find some of those files. So it's users, this is the user, this is the desktop file. Um, I've got those files in here, Adobe Audition. Um, I can click on this and then it pops up over here. So then I've got this file right here. And I could listen to it or I could play it, hit the play so button. Our recording is started. It'll play it for me if I just wanted to know, see exactly which one I'm looking for. And if I, if I know which one I want, if that's the one I want, I can just double click it and it imports it for me. Okay, so it's imported it up here. And this actually shows me now my waveform, right, of what that file looks like. And we can, of course, 
jump back and forth between um, our session or our various waveforms, okay? That's what I mean by the difference between waveform and multi-track session. Waveform shows you individual files, and multi-track session shows us the actual project that we're working on. In this case, it's the podcast. All right, so that's one way of importing our files. We can also go to file, um, uh, where is it, file, import, file this way. So again, you can go to uh, my desktop, um, audition, um, let's say my music file, reggae. I can open that one as well. I can bring it in. Um, or I can also do something this like this. I can actually find that folder. So I'm just using my finder on my desktop, Adobe Audition, um, narration. So here I've got my uh, intro and my outro files, and I can just click and drag those in here if I wanted to, okay? Um, and then of course I can also go to my natural ambient. I could, if I wanted to, I could click and drag in this entire folder. Now, unfortunately, what I don't like about this is that if I do that, it doesn't maintain my folder structure the way it does for Premiere. So it's basically just gonna put a bunch of files down here for me. So I don't, I don't wanna do that. Um, I just wanna work with specific files. So I don't need all of these. I know that I need, I think, um, I, think I need washing hands. I need um, raising blinds, alarm clock, putting on pants, sliding hangers, and I think eating an orange. So I'm just gonna take these, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, click and I'll drag those into here, okay? Oh, darn. Actually gave me everything, which I didn't want it to do. But anyway, so it's okay, we'll, we'll leave those in there. We can delete those if we want, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, actually it did just bring us to six, is that right? Yeah, raising blinds, one, two, Close. No, it gave us everything, so more than I actually needed. No problem, we can still work with them. Okay, so let me talk about a few other uh, things that we have over here um, in our main uh, timeline. So as I mentioned, I'm going to put my intro and outro file on this top track. Okay, so I can move forwards and backwards in time with this. I'll show you some other things we can work with. Let me just take my intro file, click it, I'm gonna drag it and drop it into here. Sometimes you'll see this box will come where it says it needs to trans, uh, it, it wants to basically take that um, audio file and drop it into the track. Now, that audio file may have a different recording um, uh, may have been recorded slightly different than we've set up this track. For example, this track is now set at 44,100 kilohertz at a certain bit rate. So maybe when I recorded this, I recorded it at a different bit rate. Don't worry about that. Just hit OK and it'll convert it for you. All right, so now we've got our first track in here. And if I want to, I can actually zoom in. As you can see, it's kind of compressed. It's very, very tight right now. I wanna, I wanna um, zoom into my timeline. So I can use two keys on my keyboard. I can use the plus key, which will expand my timeline or help me zoom in, and minus key will zoom out or contract my timeline. And you can see up here, this actually allows us to drag forwards and backwards in time. And we can also do an expansion or contraction that way if we don't want to use the plus or minus keys. Okay, so now we've got this track here. If I just hit the space bar on my keyboard, for example, now that I've got this um, panel highlighted, you can see it's by this light blue outline. So anytime I click on a panel, that blue outline shifts from one place to somewhere else. So now that I've got this one highlighted, if I use a key command, for example, a space bar on my keyboard, um, what's gonna happen is it will actually stop or start um, my, my playback. So I'm gonna hit the space bar Waking up isn't easy, but come on, you sleepyheads. Go ahead, grab a fresh cup of coffee, and join me, your host, Dean Cox, for another week. We can see down here our levels are bouncing pretty much in the right area, minus 6 to minus 12. So we get a little bit in the red, but not too much, so that's not a problem for us. Okay. Let me actually bring in another clip, and I'm just going to drop it into the interview part. I'm going to bring in my outro file. All right, it's going to, tr it's going to convert it for me as well. So now I've got my intro file and my outro file in two different clips 
But watch what happens. Join me. When I put my scrubber here, and now I hit the play or the, the space bar on my keyboard to play it. The Can't Get Out of Bed podcast. That's it for and this week's episode. Around. You can hear that both of the tracks. You can hear that both of the tracks are playing at the same time. That's fine, of course, at the end, but if you want to do different types of, if you want to work on these individual tracks, if you want to maybe do some fade ins or fade outs, or if you're editing something and you don't want to hear both of the tracks at the same time, there's a few buttons that we can use over here on the left part of each track. For example, during our playback, if you only want to hear this track and no other tracks, so let's say you've got several things several clips and all these other tracks. You only want to hear the first track, our host, narrator, reporter track. You can hit the S button right here. That's called solo. That means it grays out or it mutes all the other tracks and it only plays the top track. The episode of the Can't Get Out of Bed. Okay. Now, let's say you wanted to hear all the tracks, but you didn't want to hear one. So I can actually hit the M button and now it mutes that track and all the other tracks are turned on. So in this case, I only hear the second track. We also have an option of actually recording directly into a track. Okay, that's what the R button is here for. So we can record directly in if we wanted to. Now I don't have my my computer set up so that it uh, can record in because I have to give it access to my microphone, um, which I haven't done. We can record directly in here by using the record button down here as well. Okay, but my recommendation is. Often, unless you've got a dedicated um, microphone that you can plug into a computer, I would suggest not recording directly into the software because often the built-in microphones on computers are really not that good. Um, so it's best for you to just record um, all of your clips, your interviews, your narration, um, ambient sound, natural sound, whatever else record it in a separate device, whether it be a mobile device or it even could be um, a digital um, audio recorder and then importing, bringing all those clips in that way. Okay, so let me go ahead and get rid of this right now. Um, let me just tell you about a few other things and tools that we can work with over here. So this little um, circle or this um, number right here allows us to raise the volume for the entire clip so I can click and drag it over and as you can see the volume goes up because it's right here it's gone from 0 to 15 or you can click it and bring it back down to 0 again or you can just click right in there and just leave it at 0 so nothing's happened. This other one basically is changing it the stereo from left to right channel so I can either make it more just hearing in the left ear or the right ear. I would probably just leave these alone because you don't want to have something that sounds too off if you only have, um, let's say, an interview in the left ear and the narration in the right ear. You probably don't, don't want to do that. All right. Um, one more thing that I just want to show you real quick before we really jump into, into editing. And that is if you have a particular file, for example, a narration that you've recorded or an interview that, re that you've recorded, and the audio quality is not so good. And what I mean by that is maybe you've recorded the file too quiet and then you go in and you bring in the file in here or let's say you even look at the waveform. So I'll just double click on Amelie interview. You look at the waveform. Recording. You so play it. recording has started. On when okay, you play you it and it's not bouncing high enough for you. So you want to raise the volume. Okay, okay. you can raise the volume by, for example, you can raise the volume here. As you can see, as I'm raising and lowering the volume, the waveform gets bigger and smaller. Now, sometimes when you do that, when you do raise the, uh, the volume, let's go back, let's undo that. What can happen is that you may actually introduce some um, hiss that was recorded quietly, but it's kind of been boosted now as well. So you've got some room tone or hiss, or maybe you even recorded the interview when there was a computer humming in the background or there was the humming of a refrigerator or, or something like that. Some kind of constant noise or buzz or hiss that was in the background. And that's something that you really um, don't want to have. So what we can do is there is a tool that we can work with to remove some of that hiss or some of that room tone. Um, and that says, let me just go and open up another file first of all. I'll just drop it in here. It should be right here. It's called Little Lamb Noisy. All right. So here's Little Lamb Noisy. And let's just listen to it under the waveform. So here you can see the waveform. Let's play it so you can listen to what it sounds like. 
Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Okay, so what you've probably been able to identify is that there is some room tone or hiss, in particular, right, if you listen to this part right here. Okay, you hear that Mary tone. had a... So, this room tone, this hiss, um, or buzzing that we hear, we'd like to remove it. It's here, it's during all of the quiet parts. We can really, really hear that room tone. Ideally, we would like to have an interview or a narration or anything else where we don't have that room tone because this is supposed to be pure silence, but it's not pure silence, right? We've had, we have a hissing. Mary. So we need to find a way to remove that throughout the entire clip from beginning to end. All right, so here's the steps that you would have to do this. And again, you don't have to do this only if you notice that an interview clip you may have or a narration that you recorded has some kind of hissing or buzzing or something like that in the background. And it only can be a consistent sound. For example, if you've recorded your interview and there's music in the background, well, this won't really help you, all right? Or if you recorded it and there's a bunch of um, automobile or vehicular traffic in the background, you can't really use this. It can only be with a kind of constant hum or a constant tone. Okay, so here's what you need to do. First, we find um, the spot or the sound that we would like to remove. We'd like to remove this hissing or noise from the entire clip. So we highlight it, you click and drag it. Okay, you highlight the area that, or the noise print that you would like to remove. Then you go up to effects, noise reduction restoration, noise reduction. And you're gonna get this pop-up window, a new panel that we're gonna work with. First button right on top, it says capture noise print. So it's basically, I'm telling the computer now that I wanna capture this as the sound that I want to remove from the entire clip. Capture noise print. Okay, so it's selected that for us. Now, I want to do something in this window to remove the noise from this entire clip. So to do that, I need to select the entire clip. Okay, now it's selected everything from beginning to end. As you can see, it's all white. Now I want to play around with these various sliders down here to find out what is the optimal amount of reduction that I can do. You can also open up this advanced feature and do some more changes down here. Now, something you need to be aware of. When I am now going to want to remove this room tone or this audio hiss, it's gonna affect even her voice. It's not just gonna affect the quiet parts, which should be the quiet parts, but it's also gonna affect her voice. So we have to be careful that we don't do too much that we have again the sliders these choices in the optimal range because if you have it for example too high or if you're doing too much um, noise removal it will really damage the person's voice so all right let me just leave it up real high like this let me hit the space bar and you can hear the changes mary had a little lamb its fleece was white as snow and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Okay, so you can definitely hear that this sound is now gone, but her voice probably has a little bit of an echoey or tinny sound to it. So how much do we want to do? Mary had a little lamb. You kind of just really have to try out these different numbers, figures. Now, I've played with this one a little bit. I think optimally it's somewhere around here and somewhere around 50% here. Let's just change it to 50% and let's hit play again. Its fleece was white as snow and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's probably the best that we can get it without affecting her voice too much. And if you want to hear what you're removing, you can click this button here, play it again. All right, so that tells you that hum or that buzz that we're removing. So once you've done all these selections, you hit apply. And now, as you can see, it's taken out a little bit of that. So this is the after, this is the before, all right, and that's the after. And if you want to, you can play it again. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Okay, not the best again, but at least we made an effort to remove some of that, uh, that tone or this huzz, buzzing or hissing. And once you've done something like that, 
um, you'll see that it's created a new file for us right here. It's got a little star asterisk, and that's basically saying that this is now an edited waveform or an edited file. So whenever we work now in um, our timeline or in our session, we grab that one. If we drop it in there, it'll automatically give us the new edited version, and we'll go back to the original one. Okay, but I actually don't need to work with that one. But I, this was just a way to quickly kind of show you how to um, change the, the the background noise or hum or buzz or something like that. As I mentioned before, in our podcast, we're going to use our top track for the host and narration. And in my case, I'm going to use it for I'm going to lay down the intro and outro files. Second track is going to be for the interview. Third track for sound and sound effects. Fourth track for our music and so on. Okay. So my interview is gonna go here, and I've got an interview track right here, so I can just drag that and drop it right in there. It's gonna trans, transform it for us and just drops it right in. Now I can already see, if I just solo this, and I'm just gonna play this track down here, I can already kind of see that my audio levels yeah, and I want are you to a bit low. You should always ask your interview subject to introduce you. Please introduce yourself to me with your full name. Tell me something about yourself. Like my like my middle names yes. and everything. Start off, start <laughs> off. It's okay. It's, it's up to you. You, you can just give your first name and last name. My name is so and so. Okay. Give me okay. So there's nothing that we need to change on. This. If we needed to change something on this, what we could do is we could just double click it, and we could change, make some changes here. And whatever changes we make would automatically be updated here. But I think we're okay. The interview is going to be here. Um, our music, which is the reggae music, where is that? That's right here. That's eventually going to go um, in this part. I can just drop it in there for now. Um, my sound effects, my ambient natural sound, I don't know what that's going to be yet or where I want it, so I'm just going to leave this blank for right now. So the main files that I'm really going to use are um, my interview, maybe my narration um, that you may have up here or as questions you ask as a reporter you might want to add up here. Um, and music, and if you have some ambient and natural sound, we can drop those out in there as we need. Okay, one other little tool up here which will be helpful for us, this right here. This is called a snap tool. It looks like a horseshoe or a magnet. And what that means is wherever this um, scrubber is, that's gonna act as a magnet. Okay, so for example, if I click, and I've got a magnet turned on, I click and I start dragging the edge of my file over as I get close to the red line it'll just kind of like snap right on there as you can see it just pops right on there okay and that will help us when we're doing some fine-tune editing later on this also helps us if we're going to want to do something cutting for example if I know that I want to be very very precise and I move my with the arrow keys I move my red line left and right my scrubber left and right and I want to cut right here I want to be very very precise and use my clip or my razor tool and my quick key command is R, so I can use R, and then I can cut that clip, right? And it cuts it exactly where that red line is. Let me just go ahead and undo that. So we've got the razor tool, we've got our move tool, which is V, so we can jump back and forth between R and V, razoring and moving. Those are the two main tools that we're probably going to use, the R and V tool. Okay, so before I get too far um, into this, I need to now start um, cutting up or selecting the bits and pieces out of the interview or out of let's say narration or whatever else that I have up here. Before I start doing that I want to show you what I did um, on the back end to prepare myself for this story. And let me just go ahead and close some of this down. Let me open up my audition folder right here where I'm gonna where I'm putting together my assignment, my podcast. Okay, as I've already shown you, I've got some ambient and natural sound files in here. I've got um, my intro and outro files here that, that um, in, introduce the podcast and then finish the podcast at the end. Um, I've got my music file in here and I've got my interview with Amelie here. Now what I've also done, um, this is the audio file for the interview. Now I've transcribed that interview. And what that means is um, I've taken my audio file and I've actually created a Word document of all the questions and answers from that interview, from both the reporter and the interviewee. And the reason I do that 
is I want to see exactly what it is that was said so I can s decide which pieces I want to use for my story. And it also helps me identify exactly where in that entire audio clip, so where in this entire audio clip, something was said. Okay, and that's, and that's, that's the piece that I, or pieces that I will want to put into my timeline later on. So I can do this all by hand, manually. That means I listen to um, this clip, opening it up in some software, hit the play button, open up a Word file, and just start basically typing everything out by hand. Now this takes a long time. Transcribing takes a long time. For every one minute of recorded audio, it takes about six to eight minutes of transcribing it. So that can be a lot of time. If you have a one hour interview, it could take you six to eight hours to transcribe that. So instead of doing this all by hand, I've actually gone to a website. It's called happyscribe.com and it actually allows you to transcribe 30 minutes for free. And that's great. My interview is only about eight minutes long. So um, I just created a free account, uploaded that, uploaded this audio file, at this MP3 file. It transcribed it for me and then it spit out this, or that gave this back to me. So this is everything that's basically in that audio file now written out for me. Super easy, and I was able to download it. I could say I wanted it as a Microsoft Word file, and it created the Microsoft Word file, which is this right here. Now, it did take a little bit more time to read through and listen to everything again, do small corrections where necessary, add a few more time codes in there. For example, if there was a large part where um, Amelie was speaking, talking so she is speaker one and I'm speaker two if she's you know saying this very large section right here I want to break this up a little bit so I can see the various thoughts at different times this will help me later on <clears throat> when I'm putting my script together and when I'm also working in the software okay so that was pretty easy pretty convenient it only took only three to five minutes something like that not as long as the six to eight hours or an hour or so that it, that it might have been if I would have transcribed the eight minute um, interview so that's one file that I created, one Word file I created out of the interview. Now what I also did is I've created myself a script. And the script is color-coded and it's very much, de it's very detailed about how I want my story or my podcast now to be edited. So as you can see, I've said here at the very beginning, I'm going to fade in my intro and then I'm going to fade, in my, fade out my intro. That actually gives me the file name, intro.mp3. And then the next part of the story will be Amelie is going to say this. And here's where I'm using my transcription, right? My, my written transcriptions, because I know it's, here's the time when she says this part right here. And the red indented, this is where I'm going to use certain ambient or natural sound pieces. And also here in the purple part, that's when I'm going to fade in or fade out the music or use it in different ways. So I've, I've actually kind of created my whole story in a written format for me. So it'll be easier for me working in the software to quickly um, edit the story and put it together. Because if I just do this without having any kind of a plan, it's going to take me a long time. So I've written out my plan and I'm just going to follow this step by step now. All right, so we're just going to leave this file open. Let's go back to audition. <clears throat> okay, so first things first. I know that I'm going to have my intro here and I know that I'm going to have my interview here. I don't have any kind of narration. Um, I just have this intro and then I'm going to have interview uh, sound from Amelie. Occasionally I'll have some music and then I'll also have a few natural sound pieces. What I want to do first is I'm actually going to do the biggest part of the work at the beginning. And I'm really relying mostly on my interview with Amelie as this story or this podcast. So I'm just going to cut up, so to say. I'm going to cut up her interview first. So I'm going to take her interview, put it right at the beginning. I'm going to solo this, so I only want to hear her interview. I don't want to hear what's up here in the host narrator, and I don't want to hear the music. So I'm only going to hear what she says. And I'm just going to go through my script now and cut some pieces out. So for example, I know here at the 219 mark, I need this part where she says, it's a horrible, horrible sound, and it ends with, so that I can turn it off. Okay, let's go to 219. So we will move forward in time. So roughly around here somewhere, let's just start it. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> yep, that's where she is. It's a horrible, horrible sound. Okay, I'm gonna put my marker here. 
I'm gonna go to my razor tool, R, I'm gonna cut that. Now I'm gonna play it until I hear her say, so that I can turn it off. It's a horrible, horrible sound. It's like a, cause it starts off and just kind of like, the sound just kind of shoots out and it's like a screaming noise and it just hurts my ears. Um, and then it goes down and it gets lower, but then it gets high again. So you kind of, it's like a panic sound, I like to call it. Um, it creates like a panic, so I have to wake up. And I don't wake up because I want to wake up. I wake up so that I can turn it off. Yeah, that's where she said that. Let's clip that, okay? So now we've already got one of our tracks right here, okay? We got one of our tracks that we want to work with. All right, let's continue now. Next part, at the 47 second mark, she says, my name is so-and-so. So let's go back to 47 seconds. That's roughly right around here. You are. Okay. I think it's about right there. We're going to razor that. Um, my name is Amelie Knutson Cox. I'm 15. I live in Sweden and I go to the International English School in Husqvarna. Stop. Razor it. Next part. Um, 153, the first thing I do when I wake up, so let's go to 153. That's another part we need that's around here somewhere. We'll just go ahead and clip it. Um, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to check the time because I don't really trust myself enough to know that my alarm went off at the right time even though I set it at a specific time. I always feel like it's gone off too late or too early. Okay, razor that. Okay, let's continue on. Now I know that we don't need this part, so I can actually select that part and delete it. And I know I don't need that part, so we can select that part and delete it. And let's continue on. Um, now we go to the 352 part. So she says, so I get up and then I, so 352. That's roughly right around here. So let's go ahead and razor that. We can just be general for right now. We don't need to be exact. So I get up and then I choose my clothes or what I'm going to wear. And then I put them on. I always start with my socks and I um, end it with my pants. I don't know why, I've, I just do it. And then I choose my jewelry and then I brush my hair like three or four times for some reason. Okay, stop. Now we continue with 413 and then I go to the bathroom 413 which is right here and then I go into the bathroom okay. and I put my hair up and I uh, wash my face or first I wash my hands uh, with soap I don't I don't really know why I do it but my hands always feel, feel dirty in the morning so I wash them and the water is like really cold um, so then after I wash my hands, I let it run for a little bit so that it heats up before I wash my face. Okay, stop. Let's go to the next one, 439. That's probably continuation, right? And then when I wash my face, I always try to like um, scrub it a lot around my nose because it's really oily. And then after that, I put my moisturizer on my face on. And then, and I, then I go and I eat breakfast. Stop. Uh, let's continue. Next part, 505. I'm sorry. Roughly right here. We'll razor that. I know we don't need this part right here. We can throw that away. 505, I've noticed a pattern of me eating and she ends with, it kind of wakes me up more. Ugh, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of different every time, but I've noticed a pattern of me eating like... Okay, so first of all, I've noticed a pattern of me eating that's right here. I've noticed a pattern of me eating like citrus fruits in the morning, which isn't really that good because I brush my teeth right after, but like oranges or um, like mandarins or apples um, or bananas. And I don't know, I just like eating fruits in the morning because it's like, it's fresh and it kind of wakes me up more. Okay, stop. Um, let's continue on, 7.02. We'll just make some rough cuts. We don't need to be exact. 702, that's about right around here, I guess. Tell me about the inter... I usually try to, sometimes I forget, but I usually um, like clean my room at least a little bit 
and then I pull my um, blinders up. Stop. 612, let's go back again. Roughly around here, so we'll just razor that. Um, the last thing I do during my morning routine is to like brush through my eyebrows. I don't know, even I don't wear that much makeup, but just to like brush through my eyebrows makes me feel like my age because I feel like I look like a baby otherwise. Like uh, and the last part is at 715, so let's move forward to 715 again. And that's right around here. Um, yeah, that's like the last thing I do, and it makes me feel my age. Get my bag, and I get my jacket that I always, for some reason, hang on the other side of the house, because we have two doors. Um, and then I grab my jacket, put it on first, and then put my shoes on. Stop. So now we've done everything that we've got, needed to cut. So this we can throw away, uh, this we can throw away. There's a few more I can throw away, but I'm not going to worry about it, or I'm not going to throw away too many of them because I might throw the wrong thing away. So I know I don't need the beginning. Um, I do need this part where she says, um, my name is, my name is so-and-so. Um, but before that, of course, I have the part where she's talking about the horrible sound. That's at the 219 mark. So let's just kind of try to put this in some kind of correct order. So the 219 part, which is uh, right here. Let's move that to the beginning. And then of course she says thing with her name. After her name, um, she then says, the first thing I do is that's at the 153. That looks like it's this part right here. Let's move this up. And then we have the 413 part. So let's find the part that's around 413. That's not here. 413, 413, where is it? it? Looks like it's this part right here. So let's move some of these things out of the way. So that's this part we need to move up. right here okay 413 then we have something at 439 looks like that was this part where is that 439 that's this part right here let's move that up okay and then we have 505 so it parted 505 so I think this part probably right here we don't need let me just so let's, let me solo this on top. Let's hear what we say here. Okay. Um, no, we don't need that part. So let's delete that one. We don't need that one. Uh, what part do we need to go? 505. Let's go to 505. Let's move this out of the way for now. 505. It looks like this part right here. Let's move that into our, what we roughly think is going to be our correct time. Uh, 505. Five, and then we've got six, so, okay, seven or two, six, twelve, and seven, fifteen. Okay, so we don't need this one. The next one we need is seven, oh, two, and six, twelve. Okay, we don't need this part. We don't need this part. Okay, seven, oh, two, move up. Then we have six, twelve. That will move up as well. The last part is at 7.15. Okay, so that's the very, very end. Okay, so we've actually done a lot of the hard stuff already. We've cut up our main interview, right, according to our script right here. So now, of course, we have to eventually kind of put it in the right place, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's go back to our script, and let's look at a few things here. So we know we start with the intro. So we've got the intro clip right here. It fades out eventually. And then we're gonna bring this fade in the part where this sound starts. Okay, so just after this part ends right here, fade down, then her voice will come. All right, let's, so let's mute our music. We don't need the music yet. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> let's move it over a little bit more. It's a horrible, horrible sound. It's like a, because it starts off, it just kind of like, the sound just kind of shoots out, and it's like. Okay, so, it's a horrible, horrible sound. It's like a sound just kind of shoots out, and it's like a screaming noise. Like a screaming noise. Okay, 
And right when she says it's a screaming noise, that's when we want to hear this alarm bell. So let's go find our alarm bell file. Where is that? That is ringing mobile phone. Let's click and we're going to drag that into our sound effects track. So we're just going to drop that in around right here. Okay, so we, when she says, Screaming noise. Screaming noise. So let's hear that screaming noise. Now we want to bring the alarm bell sound right in. Screaming noise. And it just hurts my ears. Okay. So we want to hear that a little bit until she says it hurts my ears. So what we're going to do is, it's a screaming noise. Screaming noise. Let's zoom in a little bit here using the plus key to zoom in. So now I'm going to take this clip. I'm actually going to cut it. I'm going to razor this clip. Okay. Razor this clip. I'm going to move it away a little bit because I want to hear a little bit more of this alarm. Screaming noise. Get that annoying sound in the morning. Hear it two times and then we hear more of her voice. And it just. And it just hurts my ears. Um, and then it goes down and it gets lower, but then it gets high again. So you kind of. It's like a panic sound, I like to call it. Okay. So she says, it's like a panic sound, I like to call it. So when she starts saying, it's like a panic sound, this is when I want to, as you can see here, I want to start fading in my music. Okay, let's get to the beginning of this music clip. So she says, It's down and it gets lower, but then it gets high again. So you kind of, it's like a panic sound. So it's like a panic sound. So now I'm going to bring my music in. Let me unmute my music. It's like a panic sound, I like to call it. Um, it creates like a panic, so I have to wake up. And I don't wake up because I want to wake up. I wake up so that I can turn it off. Okay. I'll wake up so I want to turn it off. That's right here. And then we want to bring the music up. So we want to continue with the reggae music for seven more seconds. Okay. So when that's over, we are right now. Our time is at 106.742. That means we want to go forward seven seconds. We're going to let the song, this music play for seven seconds. So that'd be around 113 and something. So let's go to 113. It's right around here. And we want to continue then with the continuation of her interview where she says, my name is Amelie. So we want this nice long break. So we have this kind of interesting um, hook that starts us off with something that she says and this crazy sound. And then we bring in the music and then we want to have a little bit of a break and now we're going to start kind of her story so she introduces herself we want to continue to let the music play um my name is amelie knutson cox i'm 15 i live in sweden and i go to the international english school in Husqvarna. okay as you will probably notice this music is really overpowering her voice here and here but we're not going to worry about that now let's just go ahead and set up all of our clips in our the timeline in our tracks and we can worry about fixing the audio later on okay she says that we're going to bring up the music again it's going to play for four seconds and then it's going to slowly fade out okay so we're going to go for four more seconds from here so we're at 123.4 so let's go to 127.4 that's roughly right around here now i'm going to actually razor i'm going to cut this music down here I'm just going to move it out of the way for now because right, according to my script I want my music to go away and I want her voice to come back in. All right, so the music goes away. Um, the her voice comes first back thing in. I do when I wake up in the morning is to check the time because I don't really trust myself enough to know that right, my that. it's gone off too late or too early. Gone off too late or too early and then we hear her say more so I get up Right. Maybe we can have just a little bit of a sound break in there. Just a few seconds or one second or so. And then I go in. Early. All right, early. Uh, so first we say, so then I get up and then I... Oh, where's that part? I don't... And then I go into the... Oh, we missed a part. Where did I miss... Where did I get this part? I missed a part. Mm. Too late or too early, so I get up and then I choose my clothes. Where's the part where she chooses her clothes? And then, and then I go into the bathroom. Oh, did I cut something? To know that my alarm went off at the right time, 
even though I set it at a specific time. I always feel like it's gone off too late or too early. Oh, I think I accidentally cut a part off. Or is it back here somewhere? Here, let me mute this. And then when I wash my face. No, washing face, that's further down, right? Uh -huh. So, okay, I accidentally, I lost something here. I forgot a certain piece um, in my timeline. So let's just do a few things here. I need to move some stuff out of the way. I need to make some space, some room in here. Let me move this out of the way. Um, let's, let's bring in my interview again. Where is that? Um, interview, interview, interview. I'm going to interview right here. Um, I'm just going to go to the beginning. I'll just drop it down here my master okay I can just drop it down here so let me go to the what mark 352 mark let's go to 352 352 that's roughly that's around great. here let me just go ahead and razor this let me solo this down here so I get up and then I choose my clothes or what I'm going to wear and then I put them on. I always start with my socks and I um, end it with my pants. I don't know why. I've, I just do it. And then I choose my jewelry and then I brush my hair like three or four times for some reason. And then I go into the bathroom. Okay, then I go into the bathroom and then we'll raise with that. Okay, so let's get rid of these things. So I don't need this. I don't need this, but I need this one. So let's move this one back up here again to our timeline. Now we can unsolo this. So we're back kind of where we needed to be after having accidentally deleted a file. Let's. You kind of. So you can hear her saying music fades out. Um, so the right first here. thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to check the time because I don't really trust myself enough to. Okay. It's gone off too late or too early. And then we've got a little break, so I get up and then I, let's move these together. Oui. That's too much of a break in between. Let's move these together a little bit. Too late or too early. So I get up and then I choose my clothes. All right, so she's choosing her clothes and now we've got again some set. So then I get up and I choose my clothes. So we need the picking clothes natural sound piece and we need the putting on pants okay so let's go to uh putting on pants we need that one we'll just drop that one in here for now and where is the getting the clothes what's it called again picking clothes picking clothes here it is oh that's a long one so we don't need all of that okay so where she says so i get up and then i so i get up and then i all right, then we have the sound of her picking clothes. She was my clothes. What I'm going to wear. And then I put them on. I always start with my socks. And I am... Um, I guess we can... Do we have a little bit more sound from that? She was my clothes. What I'm going to wear. And then I put them on. I always start with my socks. And I... And then she says, and I, and then we want to have the sound putting on pants. So this is the putting on pants clip. And this is the end of her talking about putting on clothes. So I want to actually take this clip and I'm going to do what's called a cross fade. So as the sound from putting on clothes fades out or goes down, I want a sound of the putting on pants to come in. So I'm going to take this clip. I'm not going to put it right next to it. I'm going to push it a little bit harder. When I push it harder, you see you've got these two lines. This is a cross fade. And now watch what happens. And then I choose my clothes, what I'm going to wear. And then I put them on. I always start with my socks and I um, end it with my pants. I don't know why. I just do it. And then I choose my jewelry and then I brush my hair like. Okay. And then I choose and then I brush my hair like three or four times for some reason three or four times for some reason. Okay. So I'm not going to go through this entire edit now. This will still take me a little bit of time as I'm doing my interviews and my music and my natural sound pieces. But there are some things that I do want to do before I kind of jump out of here. Um, I will show you the full um, finished product or the full finished timeline session um, in a moment. 
but there's a few things that I want to go over to do some cleaning up before we get to the very, very end, um, before we need to export it. So that means basically cleaning up the audio. Now, in my first clip at the beginning of the intro file, I created this separately, which has a fade in already and has a fade out. So there's nothing I need to do on that. And it's if we listen to it, we watch our uh, levels bounce down here. It's kind of bouncing in the right area. So let's just click play. Minus six to minus 12, that looks good. Come to the end, it fades out, and then we fade in her interview. Now, we want to do some really, really fine tune editing now on the sound. If you click on a clip, at the beginning and the end of this clip, you can see these gray boxes. I can click on this gray box, drag it in, and that's a fade in. Okay, and this is a fade out. And we can decide different types of fade ins and fade outs we want to do. How long we want the fade out or fade in to be, or how short. So it's kind of good at the beginning and end of every single clip to do some kind of a fade in, depending on how long you want it to be, and a kind of a fade out. So it kind of makes the sound much smoother. I also want to fade this one in right here. Now I also want to fade it out here. All right, so let's listen to how this sounds now. So this is going to fade out and this is not going to fade in. It's a horrible, horrible sound. It's like a, because it starts off, it just kind of like, the sound just kind of shoots out and it's like a screaming noise. And it just hurts my ears. Um, and then it goes down and it gets lower, but then it gets high again. So you kind of, it's like a panic sound. I of course, like. now our reggae sound is too loud. So we could do a long fade in if we wanted to, but I'm actually going to do a short fade in. And what I need to do now is I need to control this sound. So again, it doesn't overpower my interview sound of Amelie's voice. And then, of course, when we get to this part where her voice goes down, the sound of the music needs to come up again. And then when we hit around here, the sound of the music needs to go back down again and then play low and then come back up and go back down. So we're going to go up and down, up and down at certain places. So here in this clip, there are two lines. See this yellow line? And there's a light blue line. The light blue line is basically allows us to change the balance. So right now it's exactly in the middle. So if I click my light blue line and I move it this way, that means you're only gonna hear it in the left speaker. If I move it all the way this way, you're only gonna hear it in the right speaker. Okay, we don't wanna do that. We wanna leave the balance alone. The yellow line is our volume. Now I can click this line and actually turn up the volume. Makes it very, very loud. So if you want to do it for the entire clip, for example, like right here, I can kind of see that maybe her voice isn't very loud. So I can turn up, by clicking on this, I can turn up the volume a little bit just on this one clip of her voice. But in this case, I want the audio from the music to be low, to fade in low, and then around here, come up high, go back low, come up and go back down, all right? Here's how we can do that. So on this yellow line, we can command click. We get these blue dots, right? Command click and you get these blue dots. And these blue dots allow us now to basically alter the volume level, okay? I'm gonna click two blue dots here and bring it back down as well. Click two dots here, bring the volume back up. roughly right here. And then I'm going to, of course, have it fade out back here. Okay, so let's listen to how that sounds now. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, let's just go back to here. We hear her voice. We hear the alarm clock. Alarm clock. We hear her voice some more. Um, and then it goes down. Alarm clock some more, her voice, and then the music comes in. It's like a panic sound, I like to call it. Um, it creates like a panic, so I have to wake up, and I don't wake up because... At the end here, the volume is going to come up now. 
volume right around here, the volume's gonna go back down of the music. Um, my name is Amelie Knutson. Perfect. Here it's gonna come back up, and then we're gonna fade it out until our next interview part. Um, the first thing I... Okay, so we can zoom in again. Let me just do some fine-tuning changes here. I'm going to fade this in a little bit here and fade it out a little bit there. I'm going to fade this in kind of here. Um, the first thing I... All right, cool. So bit by bit, we're going to continue to build the story this way. As I mentioned, we're going to use the music when we're going to need to use the music. We're going to follow our script the way it is to drop in our natural and ambient sound files. If you have narration, of course, you'd put narration. In the end, I'm going to use my outro file, which is this one right here. So somewhere in the end, I'd have add my outro file, and that's to end the story. Okay, so let's take a little break for right now. And I'm going to find um, the one that I've actually created with everything that's finished, so I can show you exactly how the session works and what the timeline looks like. All right, so we'll, we'll pause for now, and we'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so back from the break, and as you can see here, I now have the um, full story completed. Um, all four tracks, the um, host, host track, narrator track, interview track, the sound effects track, or we had ambient and natural sound, and also the music track. It's about a little bit more than four minutes long, almost uh, four minutes and 10 seconds or so. So what I'll do is I just actually wanna play it for you. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can look much more closely at um, the various audio tracks so you can see how I did the um, the filter, not the filtering, how I did the uh, cross fades and fade ins and fade outs and those types of things. Okay, so let me zoom in for you. Let's have a much closer look at this. So I'll play it from the beginning. Um, you can listen to it from the beginning and you can also, again, as I said, you can see how the various tracks work together. Um, and the, well, how the various clips work together and where I have the fade-ins and fade-outs and cross-fades and those types of things. Okay, so here it is. And join me, your host Dean Cox, for another weekly episode of the Can't Get Out of Bed podcast. And here are people around the world open their eyes, have a good yawn, stretch their legs, and prepare for a new day. sound it's like a the sound just kind of shoots out and it's like a screaming noise and it just hurts my ears um, and then it goes down and it gets lower but then it gets high again so you kind of it's like a panic sound I like to call it um, it creates like a panic so I have to wake up and I don't wake up because I want to wake up I wake up so that I can turn it off my name is Amelie Knutson Cox I'm 15 I live in Sweden and I go to the international English school in Husqvarna Um, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to check the time because I don't really trust myself enough to know that my alarm went off at the right time, even though I set it at a specific time. I always feel like it's gone off too late or too early. So I get up and then I choose my clothes for what I'm going to wear. And then I put them on. I always start with my socks and I um, end it with my pants. Then I choose my jewelry, and then I brush my hair like three or four times for some reason. And then I go into the bathroom. First I wash my hands uh, with soap. So I wash them and the water is like really cold. So then after I wash my hands, I let it run for a little bit so that it heats up before I wash my face. And then when I wash my face, I always try to like um, scrub it a lot around my nose because it's really oily. And then after that, I put my moisturizer on my face on, and then I go and I eat breakfast. I've noticed the pattern of me eating like citrus fruits in the morning, which isn't really that good because I brush my teeth right after, but like 
oranges or um, like mandarins or apples um, or bananas. And I don't know, I just like eating fruits in the morning because it's like, it's fresh and it kind of wakes me up more. I usually try to, sometimes I forget, but I usually um, like clean my room at least a little bit and then I pull my um, blinders up. Um, the last thing I do during my morning routine is to like brush through my eyebrows. I don't know, even, I don't wear that much makeup, but just to like brush through my eyebrows makes me feel like my age, because I feel like I look like a baby otherwise. Get my bag and I get my jacket that I always, for some reason, hang on the other side of the house, because we have two doors. Um, and then I grab my jacket, put it on first, and then put my shoes on. That's it for this week's episode of Can't Get Out of Bed. Join me again next week for another wake up interview and enjoy your day. Okay, so that is the uh, full story. And last thing we need to do now, once you've done all the editing, is we need to just do the simple thing of exporting it. And that export file, exported file, is what you need to upload to SoundCloud then link that SoundCloud account or link that SoundCloud uh, filed to your uh, personal portfolio website. So last thing to do, um, file, export, multi-track mix down entire session. Um, we're going to name it something. So I could just call it, um, can't get out of bed, Amelie. That is going to be an MP3. I'm gonna choose a destination. Um, that destination again will be back on my desktop. I uh, will put it in Audacity uh, Edition, edit. I'll save it there. And you can leave everything else as it is. Don't worry about the rest. Hit OK. It should go rather quickly because it's not a very long audio file. Um, yes, yeah, looks like it takes about 13, 14 seconds. So after that's done, last thing to do is let's just double check. Um, oops, wrong one. Audition edit. And that's it right there. That's what I've just created. Have one more listen to make sure that it's fine. And then that's what you can then upload, as I said, um, upload to SoundCloud. And then okay, that's it when it comes to editing with Audition.